Budget Home Lab. What is this? Budget Home Lab is a series where I'm gonna be creating a home lab all with budget hardware. And what is a home lab? Well, a home lab is one or more servers that you run in your home to host various applications and use for testing purposes. And why am I building one? Well, I'm building one because it's extremely fun and it's gonna be useful in my day-to-day -day life. So if you're interested in following my journey of using ARM, x86, and any budget parts to smarten up my home, let's get started. But you know what's also pretty powerful? PCBs from PCBWay. PCBWay is a service that allows you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, 3D printing, and much more. And when comparing PCBWay to other PCB printing services, you might notice that PCBWay upgrades all of their standard PCBs to TG150-160 for free. They also provide you with a quick order PCB section to help you pick and design your PCBs nice and quickly. They are also currently celebrating their 8th anniversary by hosting a special activity with advantages such as free coupons, discounts on PCBs, lucky draws for modules, and even a referral program where you can get up to 10 $5 coupons. So if you ever considered purchasing some PCBs, there's never been a time better than right now. All right, so like you just heard in the intro, today is going to be the first episode of a new series I'm launching, which is going to be all about home labbing. So for the first video of this new series, what better way to start than to get to installing some? Docker containers. So this series is called the budget home labbing. So what are we going to be using to run the Docker containers? What type of budget hardware? Well, we're going to be using an ARM SBC named the Odroid M1 for this process. So the Odroid M1 is a fairly new SBC to the market, and it's brought to us by a Korean company named Odroid. It's def the this board is definitely larger than something like a Raspberry Pi 4, but I would say it has good reason to be. But first of all, let me go over this board's specs real fast. So for the SOC of this board, or the CPU and GPU combo, it has the Rockchip RK356AB2, which has four ARM Cortex-A55 processes. And the Red Axa Rock 3 has a very similar chip in it as well. So this chip isn't a complete powerhouse, but it is still good enough for my use case. And my model of the Odroid M1 right here, it has 8GB of RAM, while there also is a 4GB model if you would prefer that. The 8GB of RAM, for me, I would say could come in handy in running many docking containers at one time, because that's kind of what I'm planning to do. And this board, it has an SD card slot, an EMMC slot, an M.2 NVMe slot, and a SATA 3.0 port. So you can literally boot off of any type of connector with this SBC. And yes, you can boot off from M.2 and SATA. They aren't just connectors. You can actually boot off of them with this board, which is just incredible. This board also comes out of the box with a huge heatsink on the bottom, which is great because I don't have to provide any type of cooling. And this one is gonna be completely silent and it's gonna work perfectly well with this board. So this board really seemed like a great board to use as a server, and that's really why I picked it up. So the 8GB version of this board comes around at $90, US dollars, so not extremely expensive either. It's not hundreds of dollars, which is great. However, if you're following along and you want to use a PC, a Raspberry Pi, or any other type of computer instead, feel free to. You do not have to follow me completely by using all of the same hardware. You could use other hardware as well, and that is completely fine. The Odroid M1 fit my use case well, so that's what I'm going to be using for this video. Yours may be different, and that is okay. So let's get started with our base OS on the Odroid M1. So I'm going to be using Ubuntu Server 22.4 because it's up to date, I'm familiar with it, and it works well on the Odroid M1. There also is Debian 11 available for this board. I could go with that, but I'm going to stick with Ubuntu since I'm a little bit more familiar with it, and it should work out well. So 
I'm going to be booting off the Samsung M.2 SSD I already own. So yeah, this SSD isn't really budget per se. It's a little bit more expensive, but I already owned it. So that's why I'm going to be using it for this process. But you could totally do this with an SD card, a USB stick, or something like that. That you just, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You could use whatever you already own. I already own this M.2 SSD and it has a good amount of storage. So that's what I'm going to be using for this process. So I'm going to connect this into my Odroid M1 and screw the connector in right there, and it looks pretty good. So the Odroid M1 makes installing Ubuntu really easy through its guided installer. So I plug in my Ethernet cable to the board, I plug in the board, connect it to the monitor, and connect my USB or my keyboard, and I power on the device, I go to exit to shell right here, I type in DHCPC, I hit enter and it configures my network, then I type netboot underscore default, and then I type in exit. And this brings up a few different operating systems I can install straight from the Odroid M1. I don't have to go to some website to download something. I can do the whole process straight from the Odroid M1 itself. So as you can see, there's really only Debian and Ubuntu right here. So I go down and I selected Ubuntu. And then I ran through the installer. The installer does take some time, but it's not too difficult of a process. You just kind of have to guide through the process yourself. And now that I have everything ready and installed, let's SSH into my Ubuntu machine now and get Docker set up and running. All right, so I'm on my main desktop PC now. And so now we can actually SSH straight into our, our Odroid M1 or if you're using some other type of hardware, now you can SSH into that piece of hardware. So here in my terminal, I'm gonna type SSH and my username. So that is Luke F Renner. I'm gonna do at my IP address. I hit enter and it says, are you sure you're gonna continue connecting? I'm gonna type in yes and type in my password. All right, so now I am my Odroid M1 and it comes up with a really nice launch graphic right here and it shows us our system usage and different stuff like that, even our temperature. So some really cool stuff like that. So right now though, I do wanna make sure that my system is up to date and if you're doing this too, I would recommend going through and doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and update my system and do some essential stuff like that. So as you can see right here, it says everything of mine is up to date. That is just beautiful. But I always do kind of want to install a few applications on my Ubuntu machines. So I'm going to type in sudo apt install, neofetch, and htop because I just love those two applications. So I'm going to install it real fast. All right, so those are now installed. So I really don't need to do anything right now other than I can take a look at neofetch if I wanted to. And you can see everything looks pretty good here. I could type in htop and I could see my system resource usage, which is beautiful. But now let's get to the real stuff. Let's install Docker. And what better way to do that than to use Pi Hosted? And I've mentioned this a lot in my videos, but it's a series built by the YouTuber Nova Bear Tech. And he has some really useful scripts that make installing Docker and Portainer really easy. So I'm gonna copy this one to install Docker. I'm gonna paste it in my Odroid M1 script right here, and it's gonna start installing Docker for me on my Odroid M1. Okay, so now that we have Docker installed, as you can see, the script actually finished, and now it is installed on my Odroid M1, but it says to remember to log off or reboot to ch for the changes to take effect. So I'm gonna just do sudo reboot real fast so that everything works out pretty well. All right, so now it should be done rebooting so I can SSA straight back into the thing by just hitting the up, up arrow on my keyboard. Here it is, I'm gonna type in my password and it should log me in pretty quickly. Okay, so we're back in our Odroid thing and now we do have, we have Docker installed on our system but we need a web graphical interface to really configure it nice and easily. That's why we're gonna be installing Portainer.io. So I'm gonna copy this script right here, the top one, the bottom one updates it, we don't need that. I'm going to paste it into my terminal and I'm going to start installing Portainer. So it's downloading Portainer for me. 
and then we can actually start installing Docker containers pretty quickly after this. All right, so it is done now, and hopefully Portainer should be installed now correctly. But before we check out Portainer, there is one application that I want to install on my system, and this is called Tailscale. So Tailscale will actually make my IP address of my Odroid M1 accessible basically anywhere in the world without me having to go and try to port forward or learn all of these kind of hard things. Tailscale makes it so crazy easy. So I would recommend installing Tailscale on your system if you're looking to use this server outside of your home. If you're looking to do that, Tailscale is amazing. So you're going to want to go to download Tailscale right here and install it on your Odroid M1 or whatever you're using. So it is a one command install. So I'm going to click this one right here for Linux and I am using Ubuntu. But yeah, just the one, one click install. I'm going to paste it in here. And this should start installing Tailscale for me on here, which will allow me to use this server anywhere in the world without having to do any hard work. All right, so now that we have Tailscale installed, we actually have to log in to start using it. So I'm gonna type in sudo tailscale up to start logging in. And to authenticate, visit this link right here. So I'm gonna right click and go open link. It's gonna open up in my browser and I'm gonna log in real quickly. All right, so it is now authorated. And as you can see, it says success. So if I go over to my tail scale dashboard, and of course, I did need to mention you do need to create a user for this. So make sure to create an account with tail scale. But if you go to your dashboard right here, now I have Odroid shown up right here and here I have a public IP address that I can use to access this server from anywhere in the world and it's just so easy. Tailscale is just insane how easy it makes doing this. I just love it so much. So that is basically all I have to do to do that. So now we can go to the next step which is going to be accessing Portainer. In this browser right here, I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna type in my Raspberry Pi's IP address. And then I'm gonna type colon port 9000. There we go. And here Portainer is logging in. So now we need to create a username, a password and stuff like that. So I'll do that real quickly. All right, so now we have a username and two passwords. So I'm gonna create my user real fast and I'm gonna save it. And we, what we need to do here is we're gonna click get started. And here is our local container we only have one container running right now and that is portainer this server so we successfully have set up docker and a container on our system which is incredible but the first thing that i want to change is adding some more apps if we go to the app template a lot of there's not many there's not a ton and a lot of these won't even work on arm so that's where pi hosted comes in handy and we are going to want to select the portainer v2 arm 64. so copy the arm 64 url right here highlight it and copy it and then i'm going to go back to portainer go to settings and in app templates i'm going to remove this one and paste in the new one and i'm click, going to click save settings and if i go back to app templates now I have so many more beautiful applications to install my home server, and it's really exciting, honestly. This is going to be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So, but yeah, so we have Portainer set up, and now we can install Docker containers. Well, what's to do next? Well, the last thing I wanted to do in this video was really to set up one of my favorite dashboards to on this container or on the system that favorite dashboard of mine this is called the dashi it's super incredible since you can create like special sections with different apps grouped together and it looks really beautiful you can change the theme and there even are different widgets that widgets that you can add into your system and it's a really awesome little dashboard and I just love it. So that's what we're going to be using for this entire project of budget home labbing. So how do I install it on here? Because if I go to app templates, sadly, it's not in the app templates right here. So to install it, we're going to go right here to stacks and we're going to add a stack. So I actually already have this configured right here, and I will leave this in the description below, but this is what works for me. So it basically grabs everything we need and it saves it into our system. And this, it seems to work fairly well for me. So this is what I'm gonna be using for this video. So yeah, I'm gonna put this in right here and the name of this, I'm gonna type in as Dashi. And basically after that, I'm gonna click to deploy the stack. And this is gonna get to installing Dashi on our system. 
All right, so that stack is now installed as you can see right here. So we can go back to where it says containers right here and Dashi says it's starting up. So let's go over to its port to see if it's working. So I'm gonna click right here and where it says 0, 0.000, I'm gonna change that to my IP address of my Odroid M1. So that one, I'm gonna hit enter and Dashi is initializing. So Dashi, one of the bummers I found about this dashboard is it really does take a long time for it to start up. It is a slow launching dashboard, but once you actually have it running, it's just beautiful. I love how clean you can get it looking and how you can group stuff together. It's really an amazing dashboard and I would definitely recommend it to you all. Okay, it says it's almost done. Let's hope that's true. And yes, on the Odroid M1, this is what usually happens to me. It starts saying taking longer than expected, and then it says possible error check logs. So if you're using ARM, I could say that this is a possibility. At least it's happened to me basically every time on the Odroid M1. It just doesn't seem like it's going to work, but I just be patient. I kind of just like close this tab. I just wait some time, and then Dashi actually does start working. So let's try it one more time and see if it works. All right, so I did it a second time, and now we are in our dashboard. So it might not look like much when it's not configured, but you can really configure this, get a tons of tons and tons of apps in this, and you can make it looking pretty cool. So right now the theme is on colorful, but let's say we wanted something like Dracula. Bam, it changes. What if we wanted high contrast light? Ooh, Discord light mode activated. We go to Lizzie. And that's another theme. So there are already quite a few themes on here that you could change, you can figure, and you can really have fun with this dashboard. It is cool like that, I do say so myself. You can change the colors, the background, like with these codes, there is a lot you can do in this dashboard. I can go to minimal, so there's a minimal kind of look. I could go to workspace, which looks kind of like a desktop. I don't love that per se. I can go back home. I could go to default. So yeah, here in the interactive editor, which you can activate by clicking right here, you can add new sections, like a new section. This is called get it, getting started. I could add a new section called like media. And this could, I could have Jellyfin, Plex, applications like that in here. And I could add icons in here as well. So yeah, this is one of my favorite dashboards for home servering. It's such an amazing dashboard. And I really would recommend you guys to check this one out. But that basically concludes it for this video. I know I didn't go into tons of detail in this video, but yeah, so for the second video of this series, I'm planning on going and installing quite a few docking containers that I would actually personally use, and I'm gonna have them configured in the dashboard and just give you guys a tour of what docking containers I just love to use and how to install some of them if they're a bit tricky. So I hope you guys will be looking forward to that video. And if you found this video entertaining, please let me know down below. And if you'd like to recommend more things for me to do in this new series, also let me know. And I mean, I just hope this is a fun series. I really enjoy doing this stuff. So I hope you guys do too. So if you enjoyed the video, a like, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe. And if you want to help me out with, with this series, it would be amazing if you could share it with your friends and just share it with people you know, because I think this could be an incredibly fun series. So thanks for watching.